Good morning to everyone on this 8th of Av, the eve of Tisha B'Av, the saddest day in the Jewish calendar, the national day of mourning of the Jewish people for the destruction, not of one temple, not of one Beis HaMikdash 2,600 years ago, but of a second Beis HaMikdash, a second temple, 600 years later. And Hashem should give us all comfort and joy and happiness to our people. But this year it takes on a new meaning, a new urgency as we mourn all those who were killed on October 7th and all the hundreds that were killed after October 7th fighting to protect our people. Nearly 400 soldiers, and so many civilians. Just yesterday we lost a soldier. And the day before we lost a soldier one who was just about to get married, had proposed to his wife, and was in the Jordan Valley going to meet her. He had just finished his duty as a reservist, his, excuse me, his kala, his fiance, and he was killed. I want to start with a story. That's a very moving story that goes to the Rebbe Maharash, the fifth Chabad Rebbe. The Rebbe Maharash, as all Rebbes, had something called a Yechidis. A Yechidis is where someone would go in for a private audience with the Rebbe, and it was a soul-to-soul -soul connection where he would pour out his heart, talk about their, their struggles, their challenges, where they are, where they need to be, and the Rebbe would help lift them and connect to their soul and bring them to the place they are. And this would go on for hours upon hours. The Rebbe Marash had a secretary, a shamish, who would, a gabai, who would be the one who would usher people in and usher them out. After a few hours, the Rebbe Marash called him and he said to him, I need a change of clothing. The Rebbe Marash was drenched in his clothing. It was sopping wet. He goes, he brings the Rebbe Marash a change of clothing. And then the Rebbe Marash changes and he takes this soaking wet pair of clothing and as he's walking out of the room, he mutters to himself, he says, What's the Rebbe? Why is he getting so wet? Why is he sweating so much? And the Rebbe Marash calls him back in and says, What don't you understand? He says, Do you understand that in the last three hours, 20 people came in for an audience to me, for a soul connection, for a meeting of hearts, of souls, and poured out their heart to me? In order for me to help them, I had to put myself into their shoes, into their clothing. I had to feel their pain. I had to understand their struggles. I had to deal with their challenges and pain. And only then was I able to help them and connect to them. He says, you know what it means to do that 20 times? And then you question, why my clothing are sopping wet? Tonight, we're going to sit on the floor. As Jews have been doing for 1900 years plus. We're gonna cry. We're gonna open up the book of Eich of Lamentations that Jeremiah wrote. And we're gonna cry about what happened to Jerusalem, the city of God, the city that opens to the Jerusalem above, which is God's city, through which all the prayers of the Jewish people have been. And we're gonna cry. And we're gonna light candles and it's gonna be dark. And we're gonna take the parochet off of the ark and the bima cover off of the bima. We're going to wear sneakers, not shoes. And we're not going to be eating or drinking. And some people say, Rabbi, it's been 1900 years. Isn't it enough? And I know that not many people, not everyone keeps Tisha B'Av. But if there's ever a year that we as Jews, more than ever, need to come to Shul for Eicha, need to commemorate Tisha B'Av, and yearn for all the pain that has happened with the destruction of the temple and the, this fragment of the Jewish people through infighting and disunity, it's this year. Every single day since October 7th, there's been a family in Israel that has been sitting Shiva for a loved one. Every single day, there's been mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, daughters, 
and sons and wives who have cried, who have mourned for the ones that they have lost. We, as a people, as one Am Yisrael, as one nation, have to be able to be with them, to change our clothing and feel their pain and understand their worry and crisis that they deal with. That's what Tisha B'Av is, a national day of mourning on the year that we witnessed October 7th. And not only that, but on the one day when Jews throughout the world mourn in pain and sadness for the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash, for the Churban, for the destruction of two temples, Iran and Hezbollah and the enemies of the Jewish people are threatening to attack Israel on that day. And for the last 10 days, the people of Israel have been having sleepless nights, have been near bomb shelters so they should be able to run when Hezbollah and Iran attack. Hezbollah has emptied out the whole Daria, which is in Beirut, their headquarters, where all their terrorists and their offices and their computers and their things because they're scared of the reprisals. So not only are the Jewish people mourning the destruction of two temples, not only are the people of Israel mourning since October 7th every single day with another Shiva, but even on their day of national mourning, they can't mourning without worrying what's going to be in Israel. And that's why I encourage every single one of us to take to heart the story of the Rebbe Marash. And for today, to put on the clothing of the people of Israel who suffer in pain and sorrow. But as Rabbi Shlomo Kalbach says, there's two kinds of tears. There's tears of despair that fall to the ground. And there's tears of hope that go up to the heaven. Our tears, our crying, our pain is not one of despair, but it's one of hope. It's one of courage. It's one of crying to Almighty God, Ad Masai, for how much longer must the Jewish people suffer in pain, in hardship? Seven nations are directing their missiles and their guns against Israel. One little nation in the whole world is standing against us. So the tears are not tears of pain and despair. They're tears of pain and hope, of faith in God. Isn't it just this week's Torah portion where Moses speaks so powerfully to the Jewish people and he says, Umi goi gadol. He says, is there another people like the Jewish people that saw and witnessed God giving the Torah that has a book of laws Torah, mitzvahs like the Jewish people, Moses says. On the last 40 days of his life as he's giving the Jewish people the love, the nurture, the guidance, he says, remember, is there a nation that has a God that's so close to them? The whole Koran we love, any time we call God, he's there for us. Moses says, remember, God is always listening to our cries, to our hope, to our prayer. Remember that we are a people like no other that has Torah and mitzvahs, that has the five books of Moses, the Talmud, the scriptures, the prophets, that have laws of morality, of ethics, that bring us closer to God. And then Moses says those powerful words, We have been shown to know Ladas is the deepest knowledge where it's more than even a vision, it's in the soul and DNA of a Jew. Because God is the God in the heavens above and down above There's no other God. God is the existence in the world. So my friends, let us take today, join us tonight in Shul outside in the tent at 8 p.m. We'll have an evening service and then we'll be saying Eicha, Lamentations, crying, hope, will speak stories of courage, stories of destruction, 
but stories that will lead us, to give us hope, to feel for our brothers and sisters in Israel, and to cry out to the Almighty God, that we feel the pain of our brothers and sisters. We are one people no matter where we are in the world. And just as this year, Simcha's Torah, the happiest day of the year, was turned into a Tishabav, turned into the saddest day for the Jewish people. May this Tishabav, the saddest day of the year, turn in to the happiest for the Jewish people with a total victory and a time when God will bring the era of Mashiach to all of us. May it happen. Hey, Ravi, Amen, speedily, Amen.